the autobiography of a yogi where uh, Swami has said, Master underplays his own role. And so you don't, you just see him as sort of a humble mm -hmm. devotee going along where he was a fully realized master yes. and avatar. And you don't, you have to read between the lines to get that. Well, it's similar in Swami's mm -hmm. script. He just, oh, I'm one of the monks and this happens and that happens. Mm -hmm. But master pulled him out and singled him out to really carry on the work mm -hmm. almost immediately. Mm -hmm. And then what is that work? You know, and, and that's not at all expressed in the script. Here's in his boyhood, he's attacked. Uh, he's a young boy at that time. Same thing happens to a certain extent later on in his schooling. Mm. So he's attacked again. But most importantly, he's attacked by his guru bands, mm. and they try uh, they try to prevent him from doing master's mission. Mm. Then when he begins on his own. He also has people in the early years of Ananda who say, mm. you're doing the wrong thing, I won't go along, you know? Mm. And so his life has been one of fighting for Dharma, fighting for the mission against uh, a world that is trying to kind of prevent that. And it's there from his early childhood, even his health does that. So mm. so this... this uh, enormous mission of God in spite of the obstacles. How do we convey that? It, it starts out almost like, you know, okay, a sensitive boy with these challenges, but then to show the transformation from that through, mm. work, you know, doing his master's mission and through the training his master gave him to the evolution of who he becomes. So that's, that's the core of it. saw this film it was really I had a very very strong emotional reaction first of all I've spent my whole adult life with Swami Kriyananda been trained by him and befriended by him and there was such a deep heart connection and soul connection with him and so naturally I was eager to see whether this film really captured the essence of him. And it absolutely captures the, his hopes, his dreams, the way that he led his life. It's very, very true to his real story. Many of the words are the words that he spoke or wrote. Uh, other words were taken from actual speeches of Master Paramahansa Yoganandaji. And so the film was very true to life. But much more important for me was, I would say, my emotional reaction because I found it very heart opening and very uplifting. I was often weeping during the watching of the film. And I saw that others who watched it also had that same reaction. We read the screenplay, we're very moved by it, but it's quite a different thing to read uh, words on a piece of paper and then add the visual element, the photography and the action and the expressions of the actors. And, and then we were present for a great deal of the filming and still watching each scene being filmed and the cut and the retake 
you don't really know what the end product's going to be like. But I have to say, when we finally saw the finished version of it, it surpassed all our expectations. These were brought to life in a way far beyond what we thought could be achieved. Sometimes movies make you emotional and sometimes you will weep, but generally speaking, that emotion is sadness or perhaps you're uh, e emphasizing the uh, struggles of the hero or heroine and you uh, connect a little bit with that. But by and large, those emotions are downward pulling. This movie made me cry because it was so uplifting. It had so much heart quality and showed the deep essence of the guru-disciple relationship. The love, the caring, the desire to rise to a higher state of consciousness. I have never seen a movie before that came close to capturing the guru-disciple relationship the way that this did.